Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends, Wooden Railway Adventures, Episode 142, A Normal Day for Dennis. Dennis was not enjoying his time on the Owl and the Sodor. Originally he had when he had supported Diesel 10 and his evil plans, but as the months passed and Dennis still remained in the same shed and he wasn't allowed to move, Dennis began regretting that he had joined Diesel 10's side and he wanted to, well, leave. Unfortunately for Dennis, however, Diesel would not be very fond of that idea, and unfortunately for Dennis again, well, Dennis wasn't really that strong of an engine. He was easily bullied by the other Diesels, and that's why he hadn't left. In fact, Dennis admired Frank. Frank had, been re had recently left the shed, and Dennis wanted to do that too, and unfortunately, he didn't have the courage. One morning, the four Diesels were sleeping peacefully when they heard a strange noise in the distance. It was very loud and woke Dennis with a start. Whoa! said Dennis. Did any of you guys hear that? Uh, hear what? said Airy. That noise, said Dennis, in the distance. You, you guys didn't hear that? What are you mumbling about? said Diesel crossly. Uh, I'm trying to get some sleep here. Can you please be quiet? Oh, oh sorry, said Dennis. I, uh, I just thought I heard something in the distance. Never mind, let's just go back to sleep. And with that, the four Diesels went back to sleep. A few seconds later, Dennis heard it again, and so did Airy and Bert. I heard it that time, said Airy. Yeah, me too, said Bert. Dennis wasn't lying. Diesel heard it, but he didn't want to give in to the he didn't want to give in to the plan that Dennis appeared to be forming. Uh, I didn't hear it, he said. You're all crazy. Can we please get some rest? Yes, sir. Sorry, sir, said the Diesels, and they shut their eyes once again. This time, however, when the sound heard again, when the sound was heard again, even Diesel jumped a little bit. Wow, he said. That is loud. Indeed, said Dennis. Maybe I should uh, go inspect what's happening. You know, I should leave this shed right here and go down the track a few, a little bit and uh, see what's going on. No, said Diesel crossly. You won't. Is there something you want to tell us, for, tell us, Dennis? Oh, no, said Dennis. Not at all. I just uh, was looking to, for an opportunity to stretch my wheels. Uh -huh, I'm sure, said Diesel. I will go inspect and see what's happening. And Diesel rolled out of the shed. Ugh, he said. My wheels, they ache. I need to get out more. With that, Diesel rolled down the line. Just then, he came and saw that there were lots of engines outside the Diesel shed. They were all over the place. What's going on here, said Diesel. Haven't you heard that noise, said Molly. Yes, I've heard it, said Diesel crossly. It's keeping me up. What's the What's the matter here? You see over there, said, De said Daisy. Over where, said Diesel. There, behind your shed. I can't believe you guys haven't seen it yet. And Daisy was right. Behind the shed, next to the magic buffers, there were workmen and Sir Topham Hat everywhere. Something was going on, but the, but the engines didn't know what it was. Rocky was there as well, along with Butch and Byron. Hmm, said Diesel. That is quite interesting. I haven't really uh, thought about it until now. In fact, we couldn't really see what was going on because our, our giant grand shed was in the way. Uh, never mind, let me go get some rest. Uh, this doesn't seem that important. It is important, said Duck. I've been watching this entire thing since Sir Topham had arrived here early this morning. Something's going up, going on over there, and it appears it has something to do with the magic buffers. I could care less, said Diesel. And with that, Diesel rolled back to the shed. So what's going on over there, said the other Diesels. Uh, nothing, said Diesel. Nothing we need to worry about, worry about, that is. Oh, said the engines. Well, that's cool. It is cool, said Diesel. Now may we please get some rest? Yes, sir, said the Diesels. And with that, the four shut their eyes and attempted to get some more sleep. Back over by the magic buffers, things were about to get started. Attention everyone, said Sir Topham Hat. This day has finally come, and I have decided it is now time to destroy these troublesome magic buffers over here. I don't want any more engines from the other railway coming over here, as they all they do is they all they continue to do is distract me from the work I'm trying to do. You three workmen over here are in charge. Butch and Byron, you are to do as you're told. Yes, sir, said Butch and Byron, but they weren't necessarily very confident. They didn't even know why they were here, and they didn't feel very secure, and they didn't feel very comfortable about destroying the magic buffers. Any questions, said Sir Topham Hat. Sir, said one of the workmen, look, look at the engines over there. They're piling in. They want to know what's going on. Should we go over there and tell them? No, said Sir Topham Hat. Do not tell them. If they know what's going on, they will freak out, and that's the last thing I'd re need right now. Now, I want a man to go over there and stand by the track to make sure the engines don't come down this line. Have I made that quite clear? Sir, we've already done that. Look, over there. 
Ah, very good, says Sir Topham Hatt. Now keep that man there, man there all day. I don't want any engines coming down this track and disrupting this process. I'll be back in a few hours to check on your progress. Goodbye. And with that, Sir Topham Hatt walked away. All right, said one of the workmen. Let's get started. Butch, however, wasn't feeling very comfortable at all. Are, are we sure we're supposed to tear up these buffers? Yes, of course we are. You heard Sir Topham Hatt, didn't you? Yeah, kind of, said Butch. Oh, well, if it's what we're meant to do, I guess we have to do it. I don't feel very comfortable about this either, said Byron, but if Sir Topham Hatt says so, then we need to do it. All right, let's get started. Butch backed up to the buffers and was chained to them. All right, Butch, rip it apart. Butch didn't like that either, but he realized he had a job to do. Butch lowered his crane down onto the buffers, and a rope was attached around it. The man, one of the workmen, stepped off. All right, tear it to pieces. Butch began to pull forward, but the buffers weren't moving. What's going on, Butch, said Byron. Come on, just yank the buffers off. We'll be really quick. Uh, I don't know, said Butch. I'm pulling my hardest. Look, Butch was pulling his hardest, but the buffers weren't going over there. Soon his engine was beginning to smoke, and the rope was untied from the buffers, and Butch was moved around. Ugh, oh, he said, that wore me out. I don't know what it was. Maybe I'm just old, but those buffers are very strong. I pulled my hardest, and they wouldn't go anywhere. All right, never mind about that, said one of the workmen. All right, Byron, it's your turn. All right, said Byron. Here I go. With that, Byron went to the back of the buffers. I'm just going to bulldoze it, he said to himself. Just bulldoze it really quickly, and, and then I can leave, and this is all over. Byron moved forward against the buffers, and nothing happened. Byron was pushing his hardest. He was rocking the track back and forth in front of him, but nothing happened. These, these buffers, they're, they're indestructible. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt arrived back. All right, he said. Let's see what progress we've made. Sir Topham Hatt looked, and there was Byron, and the buffers were still there. What? What? What is this? said Sir Topham Hatt. Have you all been standing around doing nothing? No, sir. Uh, we've been watching Byron and Bush here. They're working very hard, but nothing seems to be happening, sir. These buffers, they're... They're indestructible, sir, said Butch. Ha, said Sir Topham. Huh? I highly doubt that. Byron, try again. Byron did try again, but the buffers went, didn't, wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, I don't have time for this, said Sir Topham. Huh? This needs to go as quickly as possible. Huh. Let me make one phone call and all problems will be solved. Butch, Byron, you are not needed here any longer. Uh, are you sure, sir, said Butch? Yes, said Sir Topham Hatt, and with that, Sir Topham Hatt walked away to go make his phone call. Come on, Byron, said Butch, let's get out of here. All right, said Byron, and with that, the two were away. They made their way to, a, were, they made their way to where the engines were standing over by the oil depot. Look, said Duck, look, Byron and Butch, they've come back. Hooray, said Molly, nice to see you guys. What's going on over there, said Daisy, we can't see a thing. Sir Topham Hatt, said Butch, he's, he's destroying the magic buffers. No, cried the engines, how could he do such a thing? I don't know, said Byron, but he obviously has his ways, and he's been preparing this for a long time. What does he plan to do, said Duck? He's planning to put a shed there. He, uh, he just doesn't want any more engines from the other railway coming over. Oh, well, that makes sense, said Molly, but, but what about Lady? Yes, what about Lady, said Duck. Just then, the engines heard a very familiar sound, but they hadn't heard it in a while. They barely recognized it. Is that who I think it is, said Byron, and around the corner came none other than George the Steamroller. He was back. George, said Bush, what are you doing here? I'm here to, uh, bulldoze, uh, some troublesome buffers, I hear. How'd you get here so quickly, said Byron. I have my way, said George. Not of my way. Oh, that George has made, made his way to the construction site. What is George doing here, said Daisy. He's there to destroy the buffers. For some reason, those bu buffers are really strong, and we couldn't do it. George, here's, George is here to seal the deal. Oh, dear, said Duck, we must do something. What if we made a charge? No, you can't, said Byron. There's a man standing over by the switch track over the hill. You can't get by him. Sir Topham Hatt, he's going to go with, through with this plan whether we like it or not. Oh, dear, said Duck. This is just terrible. Just terrible. George, ma George made his way to where the magic buffers were. All right, he said. I'm back and better than ever. Sir Topham Hatt arrived back as well. Aha, George, he said. Nice to see you. I suspect that you won't be playing any tricks anytime soon. Oh no, sir, said George. I will be the best steamroller you ever had. I'm sure, said Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, bother. Uh, I need to go make another phone call. Goodbye. And with that, Sir Topham Hatt walked away. He started walking to the field over by the oil depot. What are all these engines doing here, he said. Uh, attention, what is going on here? Sir, said Molly, can you tell us anything about what's going on over there? I, I can't tell you anything, said Sir Topham Hatt. It's, it's highly secretive. Oh, I'm sure, said Duck. No, said Sir Topham Hatt, it really is. Sir, said Duck, where are your engines? On the island of Soder. 
Please, you, ha you have to tell us something. Please, sir, it's... We just want to know, sir. We're your engines. We've been loyal to you. Please, you have to be able to tell us something. I can't, said Sir Topham Hatt. You guys will soon realize what's going on soon enough. Until then, I, I must get back to work. And with that, Sir Topham Hatt walked away. On his way back, Sir Topham Hatt heard, heard some shouting. Huh, he said. I wonder what's going on. Sir Topham Hatt arrived back at the buffers, and he was very surprised when he saw an engine sitting there. Who, who is this? said Sir Topham Hatt. I, I, I don't know, said the workman. I, he just appeared out of nowhere. W where'd the other workman go? We're over here, said the other workman. Sorry, we just got a little bit scared. We ran away for a second. Sorry, sir, said the other workman. Uh, who is this engine? What are you doing here? Uh, my name's Norman, sir, he said. I, I mean no trouble, sir. I've just, I come from the other railway. The other railway? Norman, if you would back up a few ple feet, please, I... Uh, please, Norman, we don't need you here. Sir, said Norman, I know these are magic buffers, and I know what I'm doing here, sir. I'm looking for Paxton. He's one of my friends. Paxton? You're one of Paxton's friends? Oh, Norman, you must leave at once. Why? All I want to do is talk to him. Paxton's not available at the moment, said Sir Tobin Hatt. He's at the works. Uh, Norman, this will sound mean and cruel, but you, you need to leave. Uh, I know Paxton had a lot of friends on the other railway, but that doesn't mean that all of his friends can come over at once and just hop on the island of Sodor. I understand, sir, said Norman, but you don't understand my situation. The, the other railway, it's its almost in ruins, sir. You must you must allow me to stay here, sir. I, I can't, said Sir Topham Hatt. Now, Norman, you must go at once. You are not allowed to be here. Your controller would absolutely flip out if you realized what was happening. We have no controller, said Norman. Didn't Paxton tell you all this? Yes, he did, said Sir Topham Hatt. Sorry, Norman, but I just cannot accept you on my railway. I understand, sir, said Norman. Uh, it's just, sir, I've heard so many good things about the island of Soda. I just, I, I wanted a shot. I understand, said Sir Topham Hatt, but Norman, you must leave at once. Ugh, ugh, I, n you know what? No, I will not. I must speak to Paxton, or, or to Dennis. Do you have an engine named Dennis here? Yes, I do. What's it to you? I, I need to speak to one of those two now, please. Norman, please, back away. But Norman would not have it, and suddenly he rushed at Rocky. So Topham Hatt leapt from Rocky as soon as as soon as soon Norman came toward him, and Norman began pushing Rocky from the down the track. What, what are you doing, said Rocky. I'm making a break from it, said Norman. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Rocky. And you don't have to make a run for it, so Topham Hatt will compromise. Oh, look out, said Norman, but it was too late. Rocky's crane hit the top of the bridge, and the top of the bridge came tumbling down. Whoops, said Norman. That, well, that's not good. Norman made his way around the bend. Rocky was freaking out. Stop, said Rocky. Stop. You, uh, Sir Topham Hatt, he will be very angry. I must make a break for it. Sir Topham Hatt's going to send me away if he realizes. Well, what is this, said the man. Ah, and he jumped clear at the last second. Rocky also went, Rocky also went off the track and took out the signal. Sorry, said Norman. If you say, if you see Sir Topham Hatt, Tell him I'm sorry. I must speak to the two of them, and he can't send me away. I, I will try, said Rocky. Want that? Norman was away. The other engines, meanwhile, had seen what had happened. Who was that, said Duck. He looks familiar, said Molly. Yes, he does, said Duck. I don't know where. You know what, said Butch. That was one of Diesel 10's henchmen. What was his name, said Byron? N Nor Norman, said Butch. Why is he back? He's from the other railway, said Molly. That's why Sir Topham Hatt want to get rid of the magic buffers. Uh, I should go stop him. You can't, said Byron. Look, the bridge is out. Oh, bother, said Duck. Great, just great. There's another loose diesel running around on the Sodor Railway. Sir Topham Hatt picked himself up off the ground and stood on the track. He wiped his clothes free of the dirt. Hmm, <sighs> said Sir Topham Hatt. Well, well, that was interesting. I was just about run over by a diesel I don't even know who's supposed to be here. Great, just great. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The workmen were quite surprised. Sorry, sir, they said. If we'd known he was coming, we'd have stopped him. Oh, that's all right, said Sir Topham Hatt. But I need to find that diesel. Do you know where he went? I saw him go around the bend over there, sir. I don't know what no I don't know what happened after that. All right, said Sir Topham Hatt. Well that's a start. Hey, where where's George, the steamroller? Did you guys see him? I think I saw him running away right when Dennis right when Norman made his move. Ah, oh, great. Now I have a, a, a troublesome seam roller running around the aisle in the soda and a, a diesel I don't even know who's looking for Paxton and Dennis. Why would he be looking for those two diesels? Paxton's gone off the works right now, so I can't talk to him. But maybe 
Maybe Dennis would know something. All right, gentlemen, this project has been suspended. Suspended, sir? What does that mean? It's uh, temporary, temporarily on hold, he said. But don't worry, this will, all soon, this will all get started up again. We've just had a couple of setbacks, if you get my meaning. Of course, sir. Will do, sir. All right, get some rest. We'll get started on this as soon as we can. With that, Sir Topham Hat walked away. He walked over to the diesel sheds, which was a few feet away. And there were the four troublesome diesels still sitting in their sheds. Huh, he said. Surprising shot right here. Anyway, he said. Uh, have you guys heard about what's been going on lately? Not really, said Diesel. Can you please tell us, sir? And with that, Sir Topham Hat quickly explained what was happening. The diesels were in shock, but mostly awe. They were happy that a new diesel was on the railway. And I have no idea who this diesel is, but one thing he did tell me, said Sir Topham Hat, was that he was looking for Paxton or Dennis. Well, me, said Dennis. Why would he be looking for me? I don't know, said Sir Topham Hat. But here's the deal. If you guys see him anywhere on this railway, you must tell him. The reason I am telling you guys this is because it would be very easy for you to hide Norman back there. You mustn't do that, okay? He's not supposed to be on this railway. If you see him, you must tell me at once. Yes, sir, said the Diesels. They realized that this was a dire situation. Thank you, said Sir Topham Hatt. If you see him, please let me know. Sir, asked Bert, what does he look like in case he does come by the sheds here? Oh, well, his color would be important, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. He is a uh, bright orange. Yes, bright orange. Bright orange, said Dennis. Could it... You said his name was Norman, right? Yes, Norman. Oh, by golly, said Dennis. It's Norman. He's back. He's back. He's back, said Sir Topham Hatt. Yes, Norman's my brother. I can't believe he's back on the Isle of the Sodor. Wait, wait. When was Norman here before, said Sir Topham Hatt. Dennis remained quiet. Dennis, out with it, said Sir Topham Hatt. I need to know this. Uh, he was one of the diesels that helped uh, diesel tent. Don't say it, said Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, sorry, sir. Well, anyway, he was one of, um, you know who's henchmen. Remember the orange diesel? Oh, of course, said Sir Topham Hatt. I remember him. He was a troublesome one. But why has he come back? He's my brother, sir. Maybe he wants to see me. Or Paxton, said Airy. This is very interesting, said Sir Topham Hatt, but uh, I, I must stop this at once. Dennis, I know this will be hard for you, but if you see Norman, you must tell him... You must tell me so that I can go get him, okay? He's not supposed to be on this railway. Do you understand? Dennis realized this was going to be very tough, as Norman was his brother, and he was supposed to turn Norman in. But Dennis realized that he had to be a useful engine. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hatt. In fact, Dennis, why don't you come out of the shed? Get your, give your wheels a stretch and help me look for Norman. Diesel 10 gave Dennis a glare. Uh, sir, I don't think uh, Dennis would be... You know what, sir? Actually, I would love a run for a change. What? Said the three diesels. Yes, said Dennis as he moved forward. I would love to come out of the shed, sir. Dennis, what are you doing? Said Diesel. What's going on here? Said Sir Topham Hatt. I don't listen to you anymore. I don't listen to you anymore, Diesel, said Dennis. Sir Topham Hatt is my controller, and I want to be a really useful engine. And with that, Dennis began pulling away. Out of boy, Dennis, said Sir Topham Hatt, and with that, Sir Topham Hatt stepped inside. Dennis rolled down the track. Get back here, Dennis, said, Den said Diesel, but Dennis was already away. They're dropping like flies, sir, said, said Bert. Now it's just the three of us. Ugh, what has this world come to, said Diesel. Dennis continued down the line and stopped. I'm very proud of you, Dennis, said Sir Topham Hatt. Very proud of you indeed. Thank you, sir, said Dennis. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt stepped out. Well, Dennis, he said... This has been fun and all, but I, uh, I think it's time I head back to my house. It's been a long day and I need some rest. Oh, of course, sir, said Dennis. Remember, if you see your brother anywhere, let me know, okay? Yes, sir, said, said, said Dennis. Thank you, Dennis, said Sir Topham Hatt. And with that, Sir Topham Hatt walked away. I know I'm supposed to be a really useful engine, said Dennis, but if Sir Topham Hatt finds Norman, then, well, he's going to send him away. And he's my brother, and I don't want, to send him, I don't want him sent away again. I must do something to stop this. You know what? I will listen to Sir Topham Hatt. I will look for him, but if I find him, I'll, I'll have him hide somewhere, this so that he won't be spotted. And then, when Sir Topham Hatt needs a new engine, I'll have Norman come out, and, and Sir Topham Hatt will have a brand new engine right there. He won't even have to pay for it. Oh, it'll be wonderful. Just wonderful. And with that, Dennis, Dennis rolled away to begin his plan. This is a great plan indeed, he told himself.